Welcome to this surgical video where I hope to share some useful tips and techniques on complex oculus surface reconstruction combined with a corneal transplantation and performing an extremely difficult cataract surgery at the same time. First, a brief history of the case. This is an unfortunate 24 year old with ectodermal dysplasia and significant bilateral ocular cicatrization with adhesion of the eyelids to superior two-third of the cornea and virtually a frozen globe. In his right eye, which this video relates to, he had a previous corneal perforation with iridocorneal adhesion and almost no anterior chamber depth. He has been unfortunately registered blind for many years with a visual acuity of perception of light in the right eye and hand movement in his left better eye. Successful outcome involves meticulously following several key steps. The first and most important step is to optimize surgical exposure of the globe. This is usually best achieved in these cases with the use of 7O vicral suture to the globe and 4O silk suture to eyelid margin. The key here is to ensure you achieve a wide based bite to provide optimal pulling forces. The next step is to ensure you achieve an atraumatic hemostasis. One in 1000 adrenaline applied topically as an incredibly effective agent for this purpose. You will see throughout this complex case, I use no cautery at all thanks to the adrenaline drops. The third step is careful dissection and removal of scar tissue. Initially release gross adhesion as it will be very difficult to find the separation plane at this stage. This is often best achieved with a sharp Venice or a Westcott scissor. Once we have separated the adhesion, adhesions start careful and meticulous dissection to find a separation plane which leaves behind a much smoother surface. For this purpose, having an excellent wide base traction suture is extremely helpful to aid counter traction, which is essential to find the plane and dissect the tissue. Sometimes the tissue can be peeled away using a blunt dissection with a hockey stick blade or alternatively use a Venice scissor as I've been doing over here to dissect the base while maintaining optimal counter traction. Now prepare the eye for corneal transplantation. Use a caliper to judge the size of your graft and also mark the center of the cornea. I often find this very useful to put your caliper for probably around about four or five millimeter and then mark from four sides. Ensure the ocular surface is thoroughly dried before applying the corneal suture marks. Now use the lid speculum for the intraocular part of the procedure. Now carefully to find the cornea bearing in mind known iridocorneal adhesions. Apply some viscoelastics and now complete the rest of the trephination. You could either use a pair of dog scissors or use a feather blade as I am doing over here. For these cases I personally find it easier and more controlled to use a feather blade However, it is important to bear in mind that you only have to use the very tip of the feather blade and also to only take very small bites during each stroke of the blade. Carefully dissect away the corneal, uh, the iridocorneal adhesion and remove the corneal cap. Now use visco dissection to release any 
posterior synechiae and also to enlarge the pupil. Here it's important not to do any cutting of the iris. As you can see in this case, there is significant adhesion of the posterior iris to the lens capsule and therefore any premature cutting of the iris could have jeopardized the anterior capsule. Once you've released the posterior synechiae, carefully dissect away and cut away any scar tissue, taking care not to cut too much into the iris as this otherwise causes bleeding and makes it much more difficult for the rest of the procedure. As you can see, I'm just only cutting at the margin of the pupil. After some stretching and application of intracameral phenylephrine, the pupil got significantly more dilated. However, given the status of this cataract and significant adhesion, I wanted better control and therefore I applied a Maluga ring. Vision Blue did not stain the capsule very well, therefore I used Membrane Blue. And following application of the Membrane Blue, you can see the capsular membrane much better. You can see there's significant uh, shrinking of the capsule and adhesion actually to the actual lens itself. I have created a little nick to see if I can complete the, the capsule rexus. However, unfortunately, it's not possible from that angle. So I create another nick at the other side of the membrane. And then you can see the membrane is very adherent. The capsular membrane is very adherent at least centrally, but less adherent periphery. Therefore, I had no choice but to perform a relatively large diameter rexus. This is quite difficult, but so far it's behaving. And you can see the mem the, the especially there you could see the, the, the rexus is completing it, it is circum circumlinear, although it's not 100% circular, as this would have been due to the adhesion, but there's no radial tear. Now, the rexus is more or less completed. However, you can see how adherent the membrane is to the actual liquefied content of the, of the soft lens given this was only this patient is only 24 year old you would have had a soft lens anyway but you can see the significant scarring significant fib fibrosis and also most you see it feels like as if there is vitreous but this is actually only lens matters there is another small remnant of the capsule which i grab it from the other end and join it with the membrane with the uh, rexus from the other side and again, this is completely adherent. It's almost impossible to separate from the lens, liquefied lens matters. Here I apply some very careful hydrodissection to try to dissect away and peel away this fibrotic liquefied lens matters from the lens capsule. I'm quite confident the lens capsule is intact because I could see it much better under the microscope than you could see it over here. Therefore, I are here now trying to release the fibrosis that the posterior membrane, posterior capsular membrane has to the anterior capsular membrane. Uh, it's not possible to completely separate it. There is some adhesion, especially inferiorly here I'm trying to really just pick up the lens the liquefied lens matters and remove it very very gently applying a little bit more hydrodissection and see if I can release that traction from inferior lens capsule a little bit more hydrodissection to separate the soft lens matters or actually it is part of the, you can see there's no hardly any nucleus actually this cataract has. It's predominantly just an epinucleus which is already liquefied anyway. So I use IA to very, very gently 
take away the uh, take away the 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 uh, remaining lens matters. Now you could see significant significant fibrosis of the posterior capsule, uh, which means you will not it's, it's impossible it will not be possible to remove or separate that fibrosis, and therefore I have to leave that fibrosis in situ for later the patients will require capsulotomy in future to improve the vision. However, given the fact that this is a perception of light, even if the patient gets counting finger or hand movement, there still will be significant improvement for his quality of life. I insert the, the, the new lens in the sulcus and the lens is stay quite central and stable, removing the maluga ring, making sure using by manual technique to decrease the amount of stretching and pressure on the eye given the fact that this is an open globe. Now it's very important to perform to, to, to perform visco dissection of the angle as there is eretocorneal adhesion as you could see quite significant eretocorneal adhesion removing the remnants of the of the cornea and peeling away this membrane which most likely it is a remnant of the desmids membrane from previous perforation. Now before doing the cornea button on the cornea I apply plenty of viscoelastics not just on to the eye but also around the surface so if there is any movement of the cornea it will glide over the viscoelastic and therefore decreases the chance of any cell loss. Now that corneal graft is completed we'll go and perform more dissection of the similar buffaron and cicatrization at other sites and carefully dissect away the scar tissue and making the eye ready now for the application of mitomycin C applying to mitomycin C the areas where we have had hydrodissection ideally you want to keep the mitomycin under the conjunctival tissue I apply this for about three minutes and the mitomycin strength was 0.04 percent it's very important to wash the eye with copious amount of BSS at least I use 20 ml BSS now applying the amniotic membrane, I got a large 20 millimeter amniotic membrane. So use one single sheet for the whole eye. I secure the amniotic membrane to the lead margin inferiorly, inferiorly with suture first. So this will stay in position. And now I will fold it onto that area using the pad which it came with and now applying the fibrin glue to secure the membrane. It's very important to use a squint hook so that you can push the amniotic membrane well into fornices because this is essentially where we want the membrane predominantly to be and decrease the risk of further adhesion. So with the iris, with, with the squint hook, it's very easy to push and secure the amniotic membrane into fornices. I also apply some acrine sutures at the superior margin of the eyelid. So I am 100% certain that the amniotic membrane will be secure. Now trimming away the excess amniotic membrane from beyond the lid margin. I've already given the subconjunctival dexamethasone and gentamicin. Now applying a bandage contact lens. Alternatively you can also put a similar ferron ring. Thank you for watching and I hope this has been useful. Thank you.